We are live. This is the market update. Did Jim Cramer just blow up crypto? Probably. That's going to create a huge dip or a small dip in Bitcoin and Ethereum, which I think is going to represent a major opportunity. So unfortunately, we have Jerome Powell. The Fed decision will be coming out soon. And then, of course, there is Jim Cramer. The poor guy is on the worst public losing streak in history. What should you do in crypto as a result of the Kramer Powell double shot? I'll tell you. Let's first welcome who's on the stream. AZ is here. I need a nap. Welcome. AZ giving me some love. I appreciate that. Wrong again. Levi, crypto path, right? Wants to pickle to go to the moon. Yes, it is the big pickle for anybody who is bearish Bitcoin and crypto, especially if they're going to sell it in the hole today. Crypto at 2 a.m. says today is the day. Caleb is here from North Carolina. Amsterdam, our friends in Europe, checking in. Bart is here. Wrong again. Kramer killed the market. Oh, oh, I know I have company with that. Levi from Nashville. All right. Wrong again. has got his orders in at 1425. Bull Runner is here. Okay. Kramer inverse ETF is mooning. Mindrest is here. Welcome. Crypto Crazy, good to see you. A better shot makes the live stream. Rugby Performance Labs, hello. Pratik is here. Glad you like the show. Bypass Barry. Welcome. Welcome to the show. I had a good friend of mine tune in the other day. I missed it. Got to pay attention to the, got to pay, got to pay attention to the comments. Okay. News. Let's do it. Prestigious watchdog condemns the New York Times for coverage about the president of the United States and how it connected to a foreign country. Edward Snowden says the CGR report of 2016 reporting about a connection between a president and a major foreign country. Corporate media knowingly suppressed oops, Corporate media knowingly suppressed facts that cut against popular narratives. They ignored denials. They easily laundered partisan attacks via anonymous sources. And they refused to reflect on mistakes. Here's a quote from the report where they essentially detailed how the media handled the 2016 controversy that a president of the United States had connections to an enemy of the United States. This is worth reading. If you are only getting your news from one source, you're getting a skewed view. This increases polarization and crowds out room for compromises because people base their views on siloed news sources. People don't have time to deal with nuance. This is important. So they settle on a position and everything else tends to become unacceptable. Walter, Walter Littman wrote about these dangers in a 1920 book, Liberty and News. Littman worried that when journalists aggregate themselves to the right to determine by their own consciences what shall be reported, and for what purpose democracy is unworkable. So I used to be a journalist. I wrote for a paper at Rutgers, a daily newspaper, which believe it or not, is 154 years old today. So I used to be a reporter and I used to be held to standards of objectivity. It was considered a component of studying journalism. Now we have somebody from the national security community who has to quote a report about how certain information was handled to make sure people get it. Because otherwise, I think if Snowden's not doing this tweet, the media buries the story. 
Why is this on a crypto show? Because if they lied to you about what they wrote about in 2016, they, as in the media, in other words, they decided what they thought was right and pushed that, or they were directed to push it. Either way, it creates polarization division, which benefits our enemies and hurts us. How do you get out of this system? How do you get away from this? Crypto. What is it that you can do with your life where you can say, ah, you know what? I know what prices I'm paying at the grocery store. I know how things are going at my company. I don't need the media to tell me anything. Really. I don't need the media to tell me anything. The only thing I need, hopefully, maybe you need the Satoshi white paper and the market update or any other research that you like to listen to versus them telling you what you have to listen to. Sometimes I talk about crypto as freedom, as kind of like a rally cry. Today, it's like a theme. Jerome Powell is going to raise interest rates a little, a lot, tell you what he's going to do now, tell you what he's going to do later. Isn't it funny how everything seems to pivot on what one guy has to say? Is that really what freedom is? No, it's not. The media telling you how it's supposed to be is not freedom. And Jerome Powell telling you how it's supposed to be is not freedom. So when you see a whole bunch of red ink in crypto, yes, you have to manage risk. You cannot be a moron. If you bought the top, you need to basically, you know, reevaluate your trade so that when crypto does move based on economics and freedom, you're there for it. But when I see a whole bunch of red ink, I don't freak out anymore. Now that said, <laughs> uh, Slight problem, slight problem. Jim Cramer says we're in a bull market, so buy on the dip. Ugh. So I got to produce TV content every day. So does Cramer. I grew up watching Cramer. He was the original. However, Cramer is on the worst losing streak in the history of, it's got to be, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. It's actually worse than Gartman, who was a, another guy that was, mercilessly ridiculed by zero hedge. This is bad because now I think it's turned into a meme. Every time Kramer says something, loads of people trade the other way. And my producer said this and I was like, Hmm, I wonder if that's true. I, I think it is right. And it's pretty scary that the guy from the big short, Michael Burry just looks at this and goes, sell. Okay, so that would account for why equities are down today. Eurozone inflation eases, but the ECB is tightening anyway. That's kind of par for the course for the ECB. They always get hawkish way after the fact. So these guys were behind the curve in the beginning, and now they're going to get super hawkish right at the end. Stupid. You know, they're, they're going to crush, they're going to crush housing in certain countries like Sweden, where, you know, housing got way overinflated. And I remember in 2000, NASDAQ had already rolled over and we knew it was the apocalypse. And the Bundesbank or the ECB came in and hiked rates just for good measure as it was going lower. So these guys always do too much tightening too late in the cycle. And if Powell goes hawk tarred today, then we're just going to have to deal with it, right? Inverse Kramer strikes again. Uh, you know, one of the worst feelings as an analyst is realizing that you have like the wrong company or too much company in a view. So yuck, yuck. Okay, so Pratik is here, welcome. Rugby Performance Labs, K Real, Richard Barry from Augusta, Georgia, Carlos Allen, welcome. 
right? Crypto Campos is here. Nice to see you. Spin is in. Aiken with the notorious love. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> greetings from Germany. Germany in the house, right? Kramer is in the bathroom with or the eye doctor, right? Kramer. Bubba Smith is here. Woolameter is in the house reminding you to hit the like. Jay Rye is also here. Welcome. Okay, so let's go to another component of the news. Google is asking the employees that are still left to test a chat GPT competitor. Okay, the company is also testing a new search page designed to integrate the chat technology from the chat GPT competitor. My producer came out this morning and told me that because he's a big chat GPT guy, Eagle King. And Eagle King is like, they have a chat GPT extension to catch students plagiarizing from chat GPT. So just when you think you know what's going to happen, they switch it up on you. Technical analysis, GAN work. Let's do a deep dive. This is Ethereum from my Twitter. 1575 is an important level in ETH. Where is ETH right now? ETH is at 1582. So right now, ETH is sitting basically on top of support. That's good. All right. If, if there's a sharp dip, 1460, if the Fed said something stupid or there's a Kramer washout in equities, I would love to see 1460 hit and then for the ETH and the market to go straight up. And you know what? I've actually got some dominance charts that may justify that thesis. Obviously, well, not obviously, there's another GAN point at 1750. These GAN points come from price time analysis. So they are on this chart. That's good. But I actually came up with 1460 and 1750 in particular from another GAN system. So if there's a breakout, right, if there's a pivot or inverse Kramer is a morning, not three days, then boom, it's gone. Okay. I'm still more interested in what happens. I'm still more interested in bullish positioning, right? If you chase certain altcoins, you're going to experience volatility right? Something's up 300% or 200% or 1x off its lows. You're going to have volatility, particularly if the market's freaking out about a hawkish surprise. Okay. The only surprise that I would have off the Fed is if somebody took Powell seriously. I know they say don't fight the Fed, but it's tough to take him seriously. But I wanted to get you guys the max alpha that I can because I live in Texas and we're having one of these ice storms. What that means is it rains and then it goes to 20 degrees. And then the ice is so severe that it actually weighs down trees and make the trees fall on power lines. So it's like Insta freeze, like, you know, Han Solo from empire strikes back, you know, it rains and then boom. You're frozen and getting dragged off by Boba Fett. We have Richard Jacob, right? Rave Song Records, Crypto Path. Would love to see some TA on GLDN. I'd be happy to do that. Aiken is like, what is a 50 basis point increase due to your current macro analysis? Let me answer it with the PowerPoint. Okay, so obviously we discussed this. This is bad. VIX. I think if the Fed does 50 basis points, the market will be relieved. I think what the amount that they tighten is less important than the rhetoric. This is VIX. This is fear in equities. There's a bullish downward sloping range, and they've made new lows in fear and higher lows in stochastics for fear. So fear could go up in stocks. Kramer, right? Now, if there is no fear spike, that could be very constructive. Very constructive, right? 
It should happen, but if it doesn't, take note. If it does happen, well, we want to buy ETH at 1460 anyway. Right? Mr. Moby Dick is here. Hello. Right? Right? Stacker is here. Welcome. Iron, 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 Iron Alien, congratulations on 2K. Yes, the YouTube channel now has 2,000 followers. Thanks to you. Like and subscribe. I appreciate everybody. Richard here from Saskatchewan. Welcome. Okay. Fear could go up. Inverse Kramer jokes aside, if the Fed says or does something today, people could freak out. If they don't freak out, it's ridiculously bullish Bitcoin and Ethereum. Here's why. So this is Bitcoin dominance. I brought this up a little. Okay. Bitcoin dominance broke out of a wedge formation. This is kind of classic crypto where it breaks out of a possibly bearish formation. It breaks out the ceiling from Celsius is now the floor. It's holding on top of like 45%. And the upside target is 46%. And then there is no resistance here. Like if something goes down vertically, when it go, turns around and gets back into this area, it goes up vertically. So I can see Bitcoin dominance going from 44 to 46 and then to 48. Now that's either because you get a monstrous rally in Bitcoin because I think institutions can't get enough Bitcoin. They're hoovering up the Bitcoin ETF. There's evidence they're hoovering up the Bitcoin futures contract. Thank you, Andy. They cannot get enough Bitcoin, literally. They can't get physical Bitcoin and they're resorting to the ETF and the futures contract. So Jerome Powell is going to say something and Bitcoin is going to go down 2%. Bitcoin at 22K is not expensive and something horrible would have to happen for Bitcoin to go, I think, below 21K, right? Everybody is going to be there on the dip in Bitcoin and I think it's the same thing in Ethereum. So I took a look at Ethereum dominance and I just looked at the daily chart going as far back as I could. Lo and behold, this looks like a giant teacup and handle. ETH dominance right now is at 19%. Here's the Celsius FTX debacle. You know, I'm always saying with teacup and handle that the handles are awful. It's untradeable. You get discouraged. You get smoked out. Looks that way to me. You realize the upside target for ETH dominance from this formation is 33%. People are like, I go, ETH's going to 3,500. They go, uh, no, it's not. Okay, ETH dominance at 33%, that's like ETH at 5,000. Bitcoin and Ethereum both have something in common. Supply is shrinking. Whales are long. They've moved it off exchanges. They're not selling Bitcoin. And I'm just wondering how ETH can just sit here at 1,500, 100 bucks off the 2017 high, which... By, by all reasons, without a black swan, would have acted as support. Ethereum at 1500 something is too cheap. Okay. Marco is here from Estonia. Welcome. Wrong again says, go Chiefs. Okay. Nabil said he got into like a water stock. Okay. Always manage risk. But we appreciate that. Shizzy is here. 24 hours from now, what's the price of ETH? Okay, well, uh, I'm good at charts, but we'll have to go to DeMarc to see if I can be that good. Water stored in 28 Sierra in 28 Western Sierra reservoirs plus the snowpack. So I guess this is the snow, and then towards the end of the year, uh, there's not going to be any reservoir storage. And they're going to be out of snow reserves. So this is trying to tell you that California is going to run out of water. And we already know this because, you know, this show 
is essentially brought to you by Gold Retriever, which is my employer, where they have GLDN and Bark. GLDN is a native token of a commodities trading system, soon to be DEX. And one of the first things you can do with GLDN is buy Bark, which is going to be used to buy water. Gold Retriever has rights to water in Greenland. And just like you have an NFT priced in ETH, we will have water priced in Bark. And the water story is everywhere. Chat rooms, institutional players, geopolitical stuff, geopolitical research houses. That story is everywhere. Okay, that is the PowerPoint portion of the market update. Now, let's jump over here. Matthias from Switzerland is in the house. Welcome. Okay, wrong again, says the ETH rally may have to wait for the Shanghai upgrade. That could be true. That could be true. Certainly don't want a repeat of what happened last time with the ETH merge. God. Okay. So here's your GLDN chart. So this is a four hour picture. So let's try, see if we can get anything on FIPS, FIP speed resistance fans. Okay. So that's not giving me a read. Here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this straight up retracement work. Dex tools has a nifty little 78% retracement tool that they use. It's kind of cool. Only I do 76, but I've been getting into the preset on this. So the 0.718 retracement, I'm sorry, the point. The 78% retracement, sorry, in GLDN is at 0 0.77, 77 cents. One thing that I think about GLDN, you got to remember the first big water order that comes in for Bark, they got to buy GLDN first. Institutions are underinvested in gold massively. Like massively. Like gold has gone up and institutional buying as in like players in the equity market allocating money to gold has not happened yet. There's massive denial about the true value of gold. GLDN allows you to hold something that pays you in gold and once the volume comes in, the auto staking reward in packs picks up because as water volume picks up, GLDN volume picks up, and that pays you auto staking reward in packs. Now, what do I always say? What happens right before the water narrative hits and the gold retriever company gets orders for water? Because I work there. I own the token. I own GLDN. I own Bark. What happens when the water order comes in? Or water orders? Arizona, California, the Middle East. They're out. They don't do something by the summer. And you have 100 degrees every day for three months like you can have in Texas. So... Today, we're having snow apocalypse and drought will come later. And what's everyone doing in GLDN? Uh, they're probably giving up right before the water orders start coming in. Because the narrative is there. We got 2,000 people looking at this show on YouTube. And even if we didn't, the water narrative is out there. Okay. So let's check what's going on in the markets. Somebody asked, 
where is the market going to be at this time tomorrow? Let's try to actually answer that question. Okay. So let's try that with the Ethereum daily chart. Okay. My personal vote is that ETH tomorrow will be above 1600. That's an important moving average on the daily chart. They have been hammering on this moving average for three days. They have not been able to break it. So unless equities crash or the Fed goes ballistic, I say over under over 1600 for tomorrow. Now, if that's incorrect, if that's incorrect, where does ETH go? Yeah, we do have the Fed and the Fed press conference coming up. They're all different events. So if ETH holds 1561, okay, Holland is here. Welcome. If this holds 1561, right, 1641 would be a good price for tomorrow's close. Now, if 1561 doesn't hold. Then you just got to let inverse Kramer take its, take its, take its time. I'll, I'll say 1641 because I believe that in bull markets, when it's ugly, you grab the dip. Okay. JP Stanley wants me to check Solana. In fact, I was just thinking about that. They are undoubtedly smashing all of that today. And listen, these bull markets, they require conviction. You think this is easy? This is not easy. Okay, so on a four-hour Solana chart, I don't have anything particularly bullish, although it is good to see that we've come off and corrected from 26 on down. Let's go to a 90-minute chart. Okay, so this I like, right? Solana, you have the 13 bottom on the 90-minute chart. You have kind of like a blow-off to the downside. Okay. And this looks like wave one and this looks like wave two down. So if Solana gets monkey hammered, $21 and 84 cents is one level. Cause the question was about, you know, what are the, what are the DCA levels in Solana? You see if I can get anything off the daily chart. No, or the weekly chart. So no, nobody, nothing. Let's go to maybe, maybe let's go to 30 minute. Okay. So I didn't get any levels. I do have 2208. All right. Let's go over here. If we're going to do Solana, let's just do it all up. See what I've been looking at on hidden pivot analysis. So if we're looking for a level, if it gets smacked, it's 20. So if you wanted to get involved and 20 holds, I'm still holding on to 36 as an upside target for Solana on the eight hour chart. Charlie S, no, you are not late. You are not early. You are right on time. You are right on time. Also, let me know if you hear the audio cracking. I heard the audio crack earlier in pre-production. Greetings from Malaysia. Greetings to you. Okay. Uh, when Taiwan invasion from Lucas? Uh, I would say that is an October phenomenon. So dollar index. I hate the dollar index. Everyone's like, oh, the dollar index is going to go up. Is it? You know, here's what I showed people in the GLDN private webinar. Okay, so let's talk about monthly dollar index, right? It's got to go up. It's got to go up, blah, blah, blah. Does it? So here's monthly. 
dollar index. Okay, so, okay, yeah, nothing is up or down only. I, I get that. But we have one, two, three, and this is the start of the fourth up month, fourth down month in dollar index, right? So one, two, three, four, five. It's the start of the fifth down month in dollar index. Well, okay, fair enough. What, you think we can't have more than five straight down months? Because we had one, this is gold, right? This is gold monthly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight down months in gold. And gold price went up and institutions have not gotten back in to say like the gold ETF GLD, no interest. So everyone thinks the dollar is going to go up. That trends over. Gold is going up. And I guess these three green candles, they're not big enough. Like this downtrend in gold is over. This uptrend is starting. This uptrend in the dollar is over. This is DXY monthly. What is the Federal Reserve going to do with interest rates that's going to give you confidence in the United States government? What? 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 I mean, let's see. Where is it? Democrats quietly panic over the vice president of the United States wanting to be president. So are we saying that the blue, the blue party in the United States doesn't even have confidence in their own people? This person has no chance of becoming president of the United States, given some Supreme Court rulings on healthcare. That's what they're telling us, right? Like the people who are supposed to be friendly to this person are not friendly to this person. Do you want to belong the currency of that country? Oh, yeah, by the way, they owe $31 trillion and their central bank thinks they can stop the price of eggs from going up by increasing the debt payments for this country to unsustainable levels by hawkishly rising interest rates. And you're going to buy that currency? I wish you the best. I wish you the best. Pancakes and peanut butter is here along with Matthias. Okay. All right. So Maddie is saying, are we going to get to the chopper or are we fighting the Fed? He's happy with the show from Australia. Uh, we're not going to fight the Fed. You can't fight the Fed, right? That's Wall Street rule number one. But you can recognize policy error. Everyone's looking for the pivot. Like, Where's the pivot? Everyone's waiting for like church, like they ring the bell, you genuflect, everything's okay. It never works that way. The Fed in the 90s used to communicate with secret signals that only bond market broker dealers could see. Then we would tell everybody that the Fed has sent the signal. And that's how interest rates would go up or down. At least the Fed funds rate would go up or down. Seriously, it, it was like a, a, a hidden communication. So it's not in the Fed's culture to go, okay, everybody, we're done now. Thanks. We're going to pivot. No. There would have to be a calamity for that to happen. So short of a calamity, the Fed just has to either continue the mistake and make the mistake not as big as it could be. That's policy error. Or they just have to go off the deep end, break everything. And in which case, you know, you just buy crypto. We need an alternative monetary system if they're going to be stupid on purpose. Right? Art is here. Welcome. Denmark in the house. Somebody is looking for the chart of Mina. Be happy to look at it. 
Let's do some DeMarc work. Interesting how optimism on the 90 minute chart, right? Came back. Very interesting. Very interesting how that's like outperforming today. Okay. So Mina, 90 minutes, 13 top. Great correction, nine bottom. Looks like they want it again. Right? Lawn Shark is here. Welcome. Smash the like button, people. Do it. Got the 2K. 3K next. 20K by the end of the year. Okay. And Mina, probably the upside target is 83 cents. Assuming this is not in an inverse Kramer calamity. Lucas Fernandez says CBDCs are the solution for inflation question mark. CBDCs, the only thing I could think they would do is be a solution to an unmanageable U.S. social transfer or welfare payment system. It's ridiculous that if you're 60 years old, and you lose your job, that you've got to try to file for unemployment and then file for food stamps and you get rejected for food stamps because they tell you we're feeding old people. We're not feeding old people. We're only feeding women with children. So obviously it's good we're feeding women with children. But I fail to see how old people starving matter or is sensible. So what they could just do is drop everybody a certain amount of CBDCs as universal basic income, or you're either in distress or you're not. If you're in distress, you get your airdrop. Let's streamline the process. Now, of course, that'll be attached to your social credit score. They will tell you what to do. They will force you to spend the money, like use it or lose it. They will tell you, you can't spend the money. You know, you'll have to comply with their narrative. Right? Their narrative, their narrative, their narrative. Where is it? Oh, yeah, here it is. The new wealth tax, right? So if you have CBDCs, they just say, oh, you know what? The federal government gave you this. Uh, we're just going to take it back. Right? And if they do CBDCs and they can reach, they can give you things in a wallet, they can take it away. They can go, they can go into your bank account. So once they start this, oh, here you go. This is what happened in 2008, right? Hank Paulson, former Goldman Sachs CEO or co-CEO running the treasury to stop the debacle in 2008, came in and said, you know what? Everyone stop this. We're going to give Goldman and all the banks $10 billion. You're going to take it whether you want it or not. And that's going to stop the run on the banks. Yeah, it stopped the run on the banks and nobody wanted $10 billion from Uncle Sugar. Because as soon as Uncle Sugar started handing out money, the Fed and the SEC were running everything inside the banking system for better or for worse. Most likely for worse, to be honest. Right? So once they start giving you stuff, they can take stuff away. Like, oh, well, we're going to give you this, but we're going to wealth tax you. Who's wealthy? I don't know. On Monday, it's Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. They don't pay taxes anyway. And on Friday, it could be you and me. Dulio from Madrid is here. Spin says tax is the weapon. Bubba says that's how they get everybody. Okay. JP wants me to look at a polka dot project. Well, moon well. See if it's in DeMarc. Okay, so again, assuming we're doing tactical stuff because of the Fed, we have a 13 bottom, could have a could have a low here, a, a trading low in a couple of hours. Big picture. I don't know. I, I think I would do this the bigger the base, the higher in the space, right? This is something we talked about yesterday. We're looking at XRP, Doge, which sucks today. You know, we're looking at all of these coins from yesterday's stream that are doing this, the bigger the base, the higher in the space, right? We want to see stuff that got dropped hard and has been making a base. This is like old-fashioned value investing, right? 
value investing, right? Driftless is here. Welcome, right? Stop the Fed pucks, you know, the Federal Reserve. Fed chart published by U.S. Treasury shows debt GDP ratio at 600% by 2070. Charlie Est is asking, is it possible that crypto can lead stocks? Crypto normally leads risk assets in the sense that, you know, crypto goes, oh no, there's a negative event coming and they don't have the luxury of denial like equities. So crypto has to move quick. Now, in this case, crypto moving quick most likely means crypto is moving up because Satoshi's vision is coming true. Now, again, this is SPY monthly. I know we've got inverse Kramer happening here, but there's a three wave up, right? This was 2020 to 2022. You have the, oh my God, from last quarter. Then you have a good up January. You probably have a corrective February. And crypto may be signaling that after two months of indigestion in equities, equities might actually do better in the summer. You know, this could be wave three, wave four, and wave five. I know, insane, right? The guys who call for a crash, they usually get their crash. They're usually nine months early, 12 months early, right? I mean, the guy from the big short was getting short in 2005. I'm pretty sure Goldman hedged its book in 2005, 2006. The trade didn't actually happen years later. So I, I'm not arguing with these guys. I'm not. Okay. So Fed just announced 25 basis points, according to the chat. So Fed raises rate a quarter point, expects ongoing increases. Okay. So that, that's how they back themselves out of the corner that they're in, right? So Bitcoin and Ethereum are now up. Let's go to like DeMarc charts. <clears throat> it's kind of cool that the, the rush to get on the air because of the power outage, at least I'm on the air while the Fed trade's happening, okay? So it looks like my call for 1641 for tomorrow will could work out. Okay, let's go to a four-hour chart for ETH, see if anything's really changed there. So, I mean, that could be the start of a new count. And basically what the Fed is telling you is that they'll do 25 basis points at a time so that when they have to stop, they can stop quickly. They're not like over-tightening and blowing up the economy. So there's the 13 top in ETH, which hasn't created a top. And the target could be 1742, which going back to GAN, that was my level. Okay. Now, wrong again is saying the first move off any of these events is usually incorrect. That is also true. So they were selling it this morning. They're buying it now. At the end of the day, I really don't see, I really don't see if you go back to the PowerPoint, what the rationalization is to fight Bitcoin and go much higher, right? Much higher. Like there's risk based on the VIX chart that stocks could go down. I get that. You know, Kramer got bullish, ha ha, stocks could go down. There's risk of stocks going down. I think there's more risk that Bitcoin and Ethereum just smoke to the upside. Just smoke because it's Satoshi's vision, right? Why did I start with Snowden? Why did I start with the 2016 coverage of the controversy between the president of the United States and one of America's enemies? because freedom matters. And one day, like today, freedom has a price, right? Free, a like a price, like you can buy freedom. That's crypto, that's Bitcoin, and everyone's doing it. E Ethereum dominance, the same thing. 
the same thing, right? So, you know, Chris is saying that the target range for the Fed could be four and a quarter to 475 and actually expect to continue increases. Yeah, I mean, he's told you he wants to do 5% Fed funds. He's told you that. Uh, and I'm like, okay. What's the saying? Okay, bro. Okay. You know, have fun with that. You know, the government can't pay the interest on the debt above 4%. So, I don't know. Let's see what we got here from the Fed. What do we got? See, he, here's the key language. The committee would be prepared to adjust the stance of monetary policy as appropriate if risks emerge that could impede the attainment of the committee's goals. That means there could be a rut row moment. They just acknowledged that the black swan that they created is out there. The committee's assessment will take into account a wide range of information, including important readings on the labor market conditions, inflation pressures, inflation expectation, and financial and international developments. Well, what financial developments, Jerome? What are you talking about? Seriously, like, is there a development we don't know about? Clearly, clearly. And of course, there's international developments that, you know, the Federal Reserve is a highly secretive organization. It stands to reason that they're in the loop on whatever's going on, on geopolitics and financial stability. Okay, so, you know, see what else we got here. So here's the news from CBS, right? Okay, so the move to ease the pace of monetary tightening, which economists and investors had widely expected, comes amid the signs that the U.S. economy is cooling off. Okay, so with the latest increase, the Fed's interest rate target is set just below 5% the highest since 2007. The Fed has done two things here. They've acknowledged that something is already broken, right? So they've already acknowledged that it's broken and they don't want to break it any further. Now, how do you trade that? Well, one of our friends here is right. You know, you don't FOMO in right away. Let's see what they do. So again, Bitcoin goes way up on 25 basis points, comes back down. Okay. Most important thing is like, don't get emotional on the first move, right? You don't know how people are positioned going into this. What you do know is that sometimes when Bitcoin lurches up like this and comes back in the bull market, that's been the dip. That is the dip, right? I'm trying to find an example. I don't know if there's one on the Bitcoin chart specifically, but like, you know, do you see how on these candles, you know, it's not the best, but when you see the market rush up and there's a wick and you go up, oh, well, it came off the highs. Yeah, that was the dip, bro. And then the next day it's like, boom, up only, you know, most likely let's, let's try, I don't know, maybe we can get something out of an altcoin like avalanche. Sometimes intraday dips are the dip. Okay. Like for example, you rush up, it comes back, you got one down day and then it goes. So we have to see, we have to see how it plays out. I know no one on YouTube wants to hear wishy-washy language. Uh, I'm a buyer of anyone's distress. In other words, if somebody looks at the market right now and goes up, oh, you know what? I was expecting one. I was expecting this. I was expecting that. You know what I'm expecting? I'm expecting Satoshi. 23,139 is a level I'll leave you to watch in Bitcoin for the rest of today. They have not been able to push through that on a closing 90 minute candle. They push through that. It's on. If it goes to 1450, you save some shekels in case it goes down there. 
So Big Rich, you know, much love to you. Much love to everybody who's been on the stream today. So I'm your host, Bill Noble. I will see you, hopefully, with power tomorrow.